Hi, I'm Jeff, Customer Success Manager at Gopin Leads, here with your webinar on how to use the leads you get from our tool. I'll be kicking off in two minutes, just waiting for a couple more people to join us. Today's session is going to focus a lot more on what to do with the leads once you have them. We've had a lot of questions lately about people, or rather from people, who want to know more about actually using the leads that they're getting. People are finding the tool very easy to use, very navigable, so I'll do a quick cover over of that, but I'm going to mainly focus on the writing process, the sending process, and of course, from that comes sales. But doing it in the proper way, taking the proper care, and uh, ticking the correct boxes is always a good thing to do. Also, sorry for that little uh, noise you heard there. Also, remember that this is a learning curve. And this is something that you're going to get better at all the time. I'll begin in just a moment, just waiting one more minute for people to join. Okay. While we're waiting for additional people to join us, you're probably watching this video on gopinleads.com forward slash webinars if you look at your address bar. If you are watching in YouTube, that's fantastic. There's nothing else you have to do. If you are watching on gopinleads.com, however, look at the window you're watching me in. You'll see that there's a YouTube logo. When you click on the YouTube logo, you'll be able to launch the webinar into your own YouTube window. And what that'll allow you to do is see the comment section and interact as well. Uh, you can use that YouTube URL to follow the webinar on your mobile devices as well. Another good thing about clicking on that YouTube logo is that you then have the URL of this video on our YouTube, and that means you can save it and watch this video back, this webinar back as many times as you like. So also remember, by commenting, you will win a free one-on-one -on -one session with me if you are the most prolific or the most uh, active commenter of the day. So interact, interact, ask questions, and let, uh, let's let see who can win this free one-on-one -on -one session. So that is the little prize at the end of the day. So click on that little YouTube logo within the video window you're watching on gopinleads.com, and remember to comment. So we're going to dive in today. I see there's 11 of you watching. So I want to go ahead and encourage each and every one of you to drop a comment. Let us know who you are, where you're from, and what you're hoping to get out of the webinar today. Because then I can make sure that I am getting everything you need straight away to you. Okay, I'll be pausing for questions here and there, but I'm going to dive in right now with why email growth marketing, which is something that we get asked a lot. In this day and age, with all the social networks, a lot of people wonder why email growth marketing is such an amazing thing. And that's because email is almost 40 times more effective than Facebook and Twitter combined in helping a business acquire new customers. It's a big claim, but it is very true. So you take the success from Facebook and the success from Twitter, and you combine them. And then you multiply that by 40. That's how good an email campaign can be for your business. Remember that the overheads on this are ridiculously low. So email marketing has the additional benefit of a median ROI of 122%. So you're saving money, you're getting better ROI, and you're getting eyes on your business, which is the end of the game, really, isn't it? That's what you want. So let's crack on. Looking at email prospecting a bit further, like I said, I'm going through this section quite quickly because I want to cover more in depth on how to actually do these things practically once you have the leads. So 
email prospecting has the highest ROI of any marketing channel. Like I said, Facebook plus Twitter times 40, that's what we're talking about. It costs you no more than a few dollars a month. Our tool has a free level. The other tools I'm talking about have a free level. There's always a free level with these tools. And then if you pay a little extra, you get a little extra. And that's how everything works, I suppose. Then also, it's important to note that you get one of the fastest possible results. When you do other types of campaigns, it can take a long time to get the results you're looking for. Email, though, it's way more trackable and you can get a lot more done in a lot less time. The reason you're not right now is because you don't know how, but that's what we're gonna fix, yeah? Let's look at the growth marketing process. And remember, you can comment away, and I will be looking for your questions, your comments, your feedback, anything you've got to say during this webinar will increase your likelihood of winning that free one-on-one -on -one with me. To look at your business, your use case, and how to best use Gopin Leads to get the leads you need. It's gonna be helpful. Your growth marketing process is going to repeat. So you'll notice on the last step there, it's not always advisable to skip to the end, but in this case we will. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That's what is the absolute backbone of everything you're doing here. Because the more you repeat this, the more you analyze your data, the better you'll do, and the more you'll learn. It's an exciting place to be because you're the only obstacle to your own learning. So go back to step one, start small. You start in your local area. This is important because it takes a lot off of your back. You don't have to become familiar with an entire new environment, culture, a group of people, all of that sort of good stuff. You just have to know your community, the people around you, and how to communicate to them. You can figure out the rest later. Let's start in your local area. Test absolutely everything that you're doing. Try new things. Always try new things. This basically means that you have to do different approaches based on what your results have shown you. And to know what those results are, there's a tool I'm going to introduce you to today that we didn't make. We've got nothing to do with. We just simply use it every day. So you can measure absolutely everything using this tool and it'll look at your data and tell you exactly where you're falling short and what you could do better with a little bit of interpretation, which I'll help you with. You will make mistakes. You will replicate your successes because obviously you're not going to do things that didn't work over and over again. You're only going to repeat your successes. And as I said, you're gonna repeat this process over and over again. But before you get there, you need to know everything about your offer. You need to plan it in depth. So let me know in the comments if this is something that your sales team bothers with. Do they do a planning session? You don't have to do this in a group. A lot of people insist on it in a company, but that does sometimes limit the individual salesperson. What you need to realize is that planning is going to boost your success like through the roof. A lot of salespeople may have an ego attached to their worth, um, which is something that's worth looking at. Um, it's, an it's an unnecessary thing, um, but realistically, it's going to result in the belief that planning is below them sometimes. So don't think like that. Planning is always going to put you in the best frame of mind to write your email. You're going to be a lot quicker with it. You're going to be a lot more confident. And those two things are, I'm sure you'll agree, some of the most important factors in your day. Let me know in the comments if you agree. So will it interest them? That's the first question. And this is quite basic, and I'm sure you're rolling your eyes in your seat and going, why am I here? Yes, but calm down. What I mean here is, if you are looking at the right niche, if you are, to your best knowledge, contacting the correct uh, decision makers, if you are, to your best knowledge, doing your research, always ask yourself whether you've done everything you could have done to prepare, right? Because interest is a very deep topic. Within CEOs and within absolutely every company, 
within every, like I said, CEOs, within every job description, there are people and people have different personalities. So figuring out what will interest people, if you absolutely need to sell to a certain company, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. You can find the person in the company with interests that you can that you can action. That would be a good way to go. Will it interest the person that's going to be reading that email? Is there anyone that's going to open that and be confused as to why they got it? That's what you want to avoid at all costs. Doing your homework is going to help you, okay? So what's it worth to them? This is why they should care, all right? These next two cover why they should care. So what it's worth to them, that is more to me about monetary value. That's got to do with how much time, how much money, because time is money, that they are going to save by using your method, using your service or using your product. So knowing what it's worth to them is all about money and time. Actual, measurable, physical, cool stuff that we need to get through our day and our lives in business. Why is it valuable to them is different. That is covering the quality of life aspect. And that will determine how much they are going to get out of your proposal, your product, and your service. And that is going to mean that they're going to click through. So if you are going to give them less stress, and you're going to help them improve their sales quotas. First of all, you need to prove that. And second of all, you've got to be careful because they're getting 100 emails from people promising that every day. And when you're selling, that's the attitude you've got to have. You've got to realize these people are talking to 3,000 different salespeople in a month. Maybe not 3,000, gross exaggeration, but they're talking to a lot of them. So value, as overspent as that word is, in this day and age coming to the end of the year you need to refocus on value and not think about it in a gimmicky sense but think about it in a true and honest way and what is value at its truest and value to me and value to pretty much everyone i've spoken to is about quality of life if you can give people an hour less work to do in a day that's a big deal if you can give people much more likelihood or, you know, three hours less stress in a week, that's a big deal. Much increased likelihood of hitting their sales targets is a big one. That's a big common stress factor, but also think deeper. You may have a product, you may have a service that could make someone's life measurably better just by having it, by interacting with it, by using what you have to offer. So open your mind to think about value in a different way. Don't only think about the traditional you know, we must offer value to the client because that's kind of a meaningless sentence in its own. You've got to know what the client will value and using that, figure it out how you can give it to them. Remember, you can get a medium ROI of 122% using email marketing. And also, quick reminder, if you are watching on gopinleads.com, click through to the YouTube page by clicking on the YouTube logo in the video window you're watching me in now. That will allow you to see the comments, leave comments, ask questions. I am looking at the comments all the time, so I will be pausing to answer any of those. I am here the entire time, and if you, this is live, as you know. So do drop a comment, and if you don't believe it's live, say, shout me out or something, and I will, and then go ahead and ask your questions. Also, remember, at the end of this, I'll be giving you my email address. So if you are one of the more shy people in the world, which is completely your prerogative, you can go ahead and email me in private afterwards. So remember, if you comment, though, you do get the free one-on-one -on -one session with me by being the most active commenter of the day. Here are are some ideas you can use to get attention in your emails. These are tactics that are going to help you a great deal. The first one that I want to go over with you is the hot trending topics phenomenon. Now, this is something you're probably familiar with. And this is something that uh, a lot of different media outlets and a lot of different companies use to their advantage in order 
to get the most out of their email streams, out of their articles that they're writing online, out of all of the content that they're pushing out there. Hot trending topics are your friend in that regard. So let's have a quick look at these. Industry trends. You are in a particular industry, whether it be travel agents, whether it be estate agents, whether it be sales in general, airlines, whatever you're, you are pushing and whatever service or whatever product you are selling in your industry, but also in the industries you're selling into, there are certain trends. Remember, it's a double-edged sword and you can actively make content from both of those in your emails, in your blogs, in your articles, on your website, wherever you like. Tech improvements is a big one. Tech improvements are always gonna shine, make you look good when you adopt them, when they make sense, of course. Go ahead and mention those. It's not bragging when it's true, and if you can prove that you have best interests of your viewers at heart, then that is where you want to be. Okay, cool. We are getting some comments in here. So I'm going to pause for a second as I shout some people out. So, Johan. <laughs> Thank you, Johan. Yes, these slides will be shared, Johan. To answer your question there, these will be there. Well, if you click through using the uh, little YouTube logo in the window you're watching me in, or if you are watching on YouTube, you can use the same URL to watch this uh, as many times as you like. So you can uh, watch this back. And once the video has been processed by YouTube's little process, then you can also skip through it to the parts that are the most relevant for you. You don't have to watch it end on end every single time. Fantastic, lots of comments rolling in. This is really cool. So Andrew Randall, hi Andrew, good to have you back again, really nice. Brussels is beautiful this time of year, a bit dark though I believe, isn't it? What's it like over there? And then we've got Toronto Hotspots, L in Toronto, learning more about the power of GoPin leads. Welcome, L. If you have questions, do go ahead and answer. Uh, I'll answer them, but you go ahead and ask them. And then Helga. Thanks, Helga. Very nice to have you here. Awesome to have Helga back. I hope to be better to interact with new customers, says Johan. Johan, that is going to be awesome. You're going to learn a lot about that, and it's uh, going to be quite helpful for you, I hope. And if it is uh, if you do come across any questions that you need the answer to, let me know. And Kylie Doll from DC, woo, Washington City. <laughs> All right, let's dive into the rest of these hot trending topics. So we talked about industry trends, your industry, my industry, and all the rest of it. Their industry that they're in, their industry that you're in, those are all actively interesting to people who are interacting with you. So tech improvements, we covered that already. Annual reports. These can be things from your own company. These can be publicly available records that you've compiled. Top companies, top salespeople, top CEOs to watch, people on the move within their career. These are all sorts of annual reports and progressions that you can show, but you know your own financial stuff may be interesting to your uh, shareholders as well as people who might want to become shareholders. So depending on the size of your company, there's a ton of different annual reports that you can get people reading and get in front of your viewers. It's going to give you traffic. It's going to give you a lot more time in their mind. Glorious autumn sunshine for you, Andrew. Ooh. Over here in South Africa, believe it or not, it's cold and it's cloudy and it might rain but i'm glad you're having a good weather day of it you know i mean we we can't complain we can't be selfish we get them a lot of the time so i'm glad you're having it today andrew let's have a look at facebook communities now these are things that we have ourselves i'll give you the urls at the end we've got two of them sales leads and prospecting uh, sorry, sales leads and pro content. That name recently changed because we are trying to angle the group more towards giving you more confidence with your content, both uh, on your emails, on your blogs, on your sites. We've got an active community there in uh, that group where you can go ahead and ask questions, answer questions, and just show generally what you're up to. Our team are also active in there. So helpful. Another one that we have is for GoPin Leads. Go figure. We have a GoPin Leads community on Facebook, and that is very useful for getting the latest on what's going on, getting access to new developments early, all sorts of cool stuff. The links will come at the end of this in the comments section where you are all typing now. 
So Facebook communities, if you do them right, give you a sense of belonging, you get a lot of interaction from people who are in those groups. So you want to make them sort of a closed group, if that makes sense, if people have to apply to enter it. That gives you control over people who post, that gives you control over people who can view content, and that makes it a little exclusive, but also makes it a lot more likely that you'll get those interactions. People who actually want to be there will comment, will ask questions. They've come and they've applied for a reason. So it's a, quali it's a quality control measure, really. Team input is a big one, especially on our side, Gopin Leads uh, community and in Sales Leads and Pro Content. It's so helpful because you have our team there commenting, I'm, I'm active there, our sales lead is active there, our CEO, all of our founders are active there, our content lead, our research lead, all of them are active in these groups. So you can get interaction from all of these people as well as the community that have applied to be there. So it's a great place to go. You get community help and you get access to early stuff. You know, Facebook communities can give you a lot of value. And Helga has a question. Are these random ideas to implement? Or do you suggest to do these in the way they're numbered? Well, they're not really numbered in order, to be honest with you, Helga. They are just ideas that will help you to get the edge. So you may want to prioritize this based on what you want to do most urgently. For example, I myself am a lot more interested in doing activities in Facebook communities and with doing webinars, which is my next point um, after this point three. Um, and that is because that's really where I find I can get the most honesty from people. I can also really get an idea of where uh, the users of Gopen Leads are right now in the cycle. And if anyone has any questions, I can jump on it really quick. And it's convenient because everyone always has Facebook open. Um, for example, and the webinars give me, like now, a really good uh, way to constantly answer your questions as you uh, as you ask them. So yeah, that's my answer to you, Helga. It's my pleasure. And then Johan, do you also have template examples? I do, Johan. I'm just going to jot down to send those in the comments section after this as well. Uh, and then Johan, if those templates um, fall short of what you need, then you'll also have my email. Uh, I believe you already may do already have my email. So then you can uh, pop me an email and get some more detailed ones or we can jump on a call um, once I've tallied up who the <laughs> most active commenter is. Um, but you are certainly in the running just by a glance. So yes, I will send you those templates in the comments at the end, along with the other information. So let's have a look at the free trial offers. These you must make sure are limited because remember you don't want to cost yourself a ton of money. Yeah, overheads need to be low. Always in business, if you do unnecessary spending, you're always going to wish you hadn't. And it's an effect of life, you know. So keep your free trial offers on a limited basis and communicate this consistently. They have to be of the highest quality. Remember, just because it's free, it can't be subpar because really you want people to look at these and be impressed, be wow, be blown away. So yeah, highest quality is what you're aiming for here. Put your best people on it. Keep your costs down, as I mentioned. The limited time frame is going to keep your costs down on this as well. I don't only mean register by the 30th. I mean that for sure, but I also mean you limit the amount of free that they get. So if your business is time uh, efficient, you would give them two hours to experience how amazingly efficient you are. If your business is quality efficient, you would deliver something that cost you very little of sufficient quality that they would get a really good idea of what you can deliver. So that's really where you want to be. So keep the value high, keep the costs down, and always communicate things clearly. What is offered, when is it offered until, and how much of it is offered. Remember, be clear about why they, why they should care as well. I'm not trying to be funny, I just mean people have a lot to care about in the day. So, you know, help them prioritize you. 
that's your best foot forward. So free or paid webinars, this one's free. I don't do paid webinars because I don't see the point. I think that knowledge should be given. So that's why I ask you, ask as many questions as you like. I'm here to do them with, answer them with you and uh, go through everything you need to know. So ask for interaction, answer questions, be honest, be helpful. That's all I have to say about that, you know. Doing more than that, if it's positive, if it helps, if it adds to the webinar, fantastic. If it detracts from it, if it helps people, if people aren't, you know, getting anything of value from it, then just rethink it, do something else. But I find that these five are a good thing to aim for. Do them live, ask for interaction, answer questions, be honest and be helpful. All right, so remember, the reason I'm asking you to interact is because connecting is more than just me sitting here talking. This is why I'm enjoying comments from all of you so much. You know, Andrew, Johan, Helga, Kylie, all of you. Fantastic. Keep them rolling in. And anyone else that hasn't commented yet, go ahead and put yourself in the running for that free one-on-one -on -one with me. So let's look at event invitations. So this is about getting you in front of a live audience or getting you in front of a live online audience. Those are two sides of the same coin. Live face-to-face -face events are very, very important for a lot of different types of businesses. There are so many different types of conferences, seminars that you could go to, even local <clears throat> uh, events that run over a space of a couple of hours. Workspaces often need speakers. It is a fundamental part of growing your recognition and your expertise and also your confidence in talking about what you do. Get yourself in front of people and make mistakes. Actually, as something funny for you all to do, go back and watch my first couple of webinars. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious. And uh, pick out the things that I do all the time and then you can even turn it into a drinking game. If you're bored of an evening, the mistakes are plentiful and they're hilarious. So you will make mistakes, don't worry about it, roll with it it's going to be fine. You know, you'll grow into it. You'll do better with everyone you do. I'm still learning. Everyone still is. Even Gary V learns with every talk he does, guaranteed, because he's an intelligent person who perceives what's going on around him. So let's look further. Live chat sessions online. These can be all sorts of things. You can do a Zoom meetings. You can do uh, <clears throat> sorry, frog in my throat. You can do Zoom meetings. You can do social media events as well. It's really, really helpful, you know, just to get your face out there, your voice out there, and to interact with people in a real way. Um, my pet peeve with that, though, and what I'd like you to avoid, is these people who get on live on social and just chat away. L go for that approach where you read what people are saying, you know, and be social. <laughs> it's social media. Go to conference gigs, as I mentioned, local events. They are small, there are large ones. You can get into all of them. You don't need an agent, you just need an email campaign. And that's what we're learning today, remember? All right. But let's move forward. Let's have a look at digital gifts. These are cool things because you don't need to pay the postage and also because people get it immediately and they get a real sense of what you're about. So digital gifts include things like databases, if that is relevant to your company, leads, tools, resources, media contacts, regional events. These are all different types of lists, databases, that you could give them. But remember as well, digital gifts can be in the form of vouchers to experience your product or to access an otherwise hidden area of your website. You can play with digital gifts. It can be something that's amusing. It can be something that lightens the heart. It can be something that's actually going to help in a business sense as well. Play around with it. It depends very much on your niche and who you're trying to reach. Top 100 listings are very powerful. Um, you'll be familiar with tabloid mags. They do these a lot with actors, actresses, that sort of thing, famous people. You can do industry trends, new technologies, companies on the rise, up and comers within those companies, within their careers. Keep this relevant though. So remember th what I said earlier, nobody should be confused when they get an email from you. Nobody should be asking why they got this. I mean. 
you know, everyone that receives an email about one of these webinars, there's a reason you get it. And the reason is because you could use this information. And that's not me saying you're bad at what you do at all. That's just me saying that immersing yourself in new ideas and just thinking about things in a different way can really help. So let's move forward from this because I want to get to the actual point of today's webinar, which is what to do when you have these leads. Your free 30-minute consultations, those are things that you can offer to people. What's it for is a very important thing to think about. So you can't be vague. You should be vague in your subject lines, but I'll get to that in, within your emails in a moment. But you need to be completely clear about what they'll get out of this. Remember, people need to be told why they should care and why they should prioritize you in their day, in their inbox, in their lives. So what do they need? Think about this and don't ask them. Do, their, do your research. Think about what they might need. And you can do one of two things. You can either get a meeting. This is the harder one to do. Get a meeting, ask them what they need, and build a solution. That's really productive, but it's a harder path to follow. You could also do it in another way, where you have a solution, you know they need it, and so you go on. You know, you may be in a position where you offer a product. You may have started your startup because the competition isn't up to scratch. So you started your service to compete with them because you're better. So remember that the people using your competitor need your service because it's better. And that's a very basic example. But think along the lines of what they need, not about what you need. It's more about the client. You know, the customer is always right is a very boring old phrase, but it just means that you need to think about them before yourself automate this. So uh, your free 30-minute consultations should be live, should be you. I do not mean it should be a robot for heaven's sake. I mean, people should be able to click a button and book an appointment with you and see a calendar that makes sense to them so they know when they can fit into your life and when it fits into theirs. Make it easy for them, but do the thing live, all right? Always upsell as well. Remember that people may not know that they have certain needs. People may not know that there's a better way. For example, we talk to people all the time who don't realize that APIs exist. A lot of you might be going, what's an API? If you don't know, ask me in the comments and I'll answer. But people don't know these things exist. They don't know there's a better, quicker, faster, cheaper way. So tell them, upsell plant the seed. Yeah, it's not so hard. <laughs> Just be honest, always be honest. And if you can't do something, tell people. Remember, these are just conversation starters. You can do this. You can come up with your own. This isn't what you have to do. This is just some ideas that I wanted to give you so you can get started, okay? So Toronto Hotspots, what's an API? Yeah, people are listening. <laughs> ah, okay, API. API is, think about it as a tunnel, okay? So an API would be a tunnel that connects city A to city B. And the things that are traveling between those cities through the tunnel in this case is information. So an API is an information tunnel that allows information rapidly and productively to travel from one side to the other, and it's only focused on selected information. So an API is pretty much if you want to use an old term, information superhighway, condensed and focused, and made hyperactive for your own needs. That is basically what an API is. If that doesn't answer your question and you're still confused about that, do pop a comment down there and I'll answer that as well. So let's have a look over here. If you are still one of the souls wondering how you can interact in the comment section and you are wondering, about how you can get involved, go to the video that you're watching me in on uh, gopinleads.com, click on the YouTube logo. It'll launch through into YouTube itself, and then you can interact in the comments, and the most prolific commenter will win a free one-on-one -on -one session with me. Cool. So moving forward, the email process. This is something that's very important for today. So I'm going to go through this list quickly, and then we'll go through it in more detail in a moment. But 
more comment action going on. So Toronto Hotspots, thank you. Wiley Raddit, layman explanation of webhooks. Please, thanks. Toronto Hotspots, this is something that I'm going to action what one of the points I've just said. When you don't know, don't pretend you do. Webhooks, I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. And I would be delighted to find out for you. So what I'll do is I'll give you my email address in the comments section after this. Pop me your email address and I will make a note of your screen name here and what your question was and I'll get an answer to you. So you see in action, you don't ever want to tell people something that isn't true. If you don't know something, tell people you don't know. Always if you want to, offer to find out if that's interesting. Uh, and then Johan is also interested. Fantastic, Johan. All right, so I'll make a note on that. All right, so what I'll do then is I will get an answer for you from our dev team because, to be honest, I didn't know what APIs were until my dev team explained it to me. How's that for honesty, Toronto Hotspots? They, it's always important to learn within teams as well. So this also keeps you honest and keeps you agile. It's a great way to keep going, all right? So let's have a look at this, the email process. Find leads, draft the email, create the templates, landing page, you can make that, uh, and then analyze the data and do it again, right? So that sounds very basic. Let's have a bit of a closer look into that. It's my pleasure, Toronto Hotspots and Johan. L, I believe it was, Toronto Hotspots. I don't want to scroll up right now because then I lose my spot in the comments and it doesn't always carry on updating live, which is a bit annoying. But I believe you said it was L. So yes, if I am wrong, please don't shoot me. Step one, find leads. So finding people to email. This is where we come in. Gopin leads, what it does on the tin. Company and individual emails will be put for you into a database really quick, and you'll get phone numbers, employee job titles, social media accounts, and company addresses along with it. I'll show you the different uh, tabs and the different results you get from the tool in a moment. But I might first want to show you, or tell you rather, why the tool happened, right? So Gopin Leads was never a thing. It wasn't here since the dawn of creation. Basically, great memory, yes, oh, well, fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Al. All right, so what Gopin Leads' uh, origin story is, is basically we had a client come to us and say, we need really detailed leads, massive scale database, thousands and thousands and thousands of leads. We've got a very short amount of time to make them in, and we need them to be accurate. So. As I'm sure a lot of the other people they spoke to told them that would be extremely time consuming, extremely expensive. But because we have an amazing team who talk within uh, themselves, we get knowledge like we have. And this is where the APIs side of things starts to shine. So Gopin Leads gives you all of this information and we built the tool to give that client what they wanted as fast as possible. Gopin Leads is one of the best uh, success stories, I guess, coming out of a project that I've ever heard of in my life because it saved that client a ton of money. It saved that client a ton of time as well. And they got good results from their campaign. So you can't say fairer than that. And, uh, you know, everyone's happy. And Gopin Leads is now a thing that exists. And a lot of people are benefiting from it. So, you know, happy things keep happening all the time. So let's look at step number two. Remember, this is just the little presentation part of the whole thing. I'm going to show you more detail on this, right? But the point of it all is writing well and writing to sell. Um, yes, it is completely fine to run to hotspots to abbreviate. GPL is fine for Gopin leads. Uh, it is primarily for B2B. Now, let me pause here and answer that properly. So, Selling B2B is what Gopin Leads is all about because the results that you get from Gopin Leads is people's business details. It's details from their company. So it'll be their company email address, their company phone number. We never act in a dishonorable way uh, with Go Goodman Lantern and Gopin Leads. Go uh, Goodman Lantern is our mothership, if you want to look at it that way. Same people, Gopin Leads is just this particular tool.
So what the whole deal here is, L. <clears throat> you want to make sure that we are giving you information that doesn't contravene any trust issues. So if we were to give you people's personal Gmails, I mean, I'm sure there are developers that would go ahead and find information like that or could find information like that, but that's not the game we're in. We want to be completely in the clear ethically. We want to be completely in the clear legally as well. So we give you information based on employees at companies. So B2B is really the best use for Gopin leads. Having said that, though, there are ways to shift your focus and use the tool to get what you need from a B2C campaign. It's tricky because you would still be emailing them to their businesses. But if you are able to get them on a sort of generalized interest scale, for example, there's the old moniker that all bankers play golf. So if you are trying to sell to golfers, maybe email banks if you wanted to think about it in a traditionally sort of um, almost derogatory um, generalized sense. So yeah, I'm not trying to be uh, rude to bankers or anything like that. I'm just trying to give an example we can all relate to as to how a B2C scenario could work. But yes, really B2B is the big win here. So we don't really get into the B2C stuff. I hope that answers your question, Al. So let's dive into writing well and writing to sell. It sounds gimmicky, but it is possible and it's going to help you. So remember, you have to use YAM to get your link happening. YAM is amazing. YAM stands for yet another mail merge. It's exactly what it is. It is simply a mail merge tool. What is a mail merge tool? It links Google Sheets with Gmail drafts. So when you type a draft in your Gmail, you can go ahead and link that to Google Sheets really easily using YAM. So, so fast. It measures your results as well. And remember that in writing your email, you'll be incorporating YAM. And you won't have to code, no coding involved, none of that nonsense. Simply two brackets and close two brackets. A specific type of bracket, but we all have access to those on our keyboard. I'll show you that in more detail in the sort of practical section. So looking at creating a template is an important part of the YAM process as well. But it also is bigger than YAM itself. So the template that you're going to be creating is a whole other thing on its own. So the brackets that you see on your screen here are not the correct ones, not, I repeat, not the correct ones for YAM. This is simply an example so I can show you in format. So the subject line, keep it brief, keep it vague. Going to the comments. Oh, thank you, Al. Yeah, look, we, we appreciate that comment that you um, love the ethics of our company. Now, it's something that I really, 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 really try and get everyone to do because, you know, the feeling of being able to sort of never lie and never have to remember what you said is an amazing feeling. Being completely honest with you people is, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your appreciation. Uh, Johan de Paul, good to know. Is YAM some sort of CRM tool like HubSpot? Um, not really. I suppose kind of. Um, it's more of a way to track reactions to your emails, um, but not so much with a CRM, traditional CRM focus. I'll show you what I mean in the practical side uh, in more detail. It's hard to sort of explain without a, a visual. Um, so let's dive quickly back into this. I will come back to that in the, in the um, practical for you, Johan, promise. Okay. So let's have a dive into this. So I said, keep your subject brief and vague. That is absolutely important. Keeping it vague is not a misleading tactic at all. Keeping it vague is simply to make sure that people open the email. It should not be misleading. It should just be a shortened 
intriguing version of what your email says. Get their interest peaked. If you want them to care, you've got to kind of flirt with their imagination. It's kind of the same as meeting a new person, which is exactly, if you're honest about this process, what you're doing. You're starting a new business relationship with every email you send, so give it due care. Remember, your tone is important. Yes, it is a business email. It is going to start a business relationship, but keep it light. Keep it short. Make the tone kind of as if it was from a friend. Look, I don't want to sound like I'm encouraging false familiarity because we all know how annoying that can be. What I'm saying rather is make sure that you don't come down as the sort of aloof, condescending, wordy salesperson who knows more than them. Rather, just talk to them as if they're a person, because I promise you, odds on they are. So keep this short, and that's just to respect their time spend on this. People have so many emails to answer in the day. I mean, I go over 50 every day that I've got to respond to, and that's fine as long as people don't waste your time. So if you don't want people to waste yours, don't waste theirs. And on that point, remember the planning. What is the message? Keep that in your mind. Nobody should be confused at any point as to why they're reading this. They should know that it's relevant to them from the get-go. Include a link as well so that people can go ahead and see what you're talking about. Give me one moment. I'm going to have a drink of water. Fair enough. So let's carry on. This link is going to make sure that you can get the point across. So your email is very short and you may be worried that you can't get your whole point across. But that's what the link is for. You're going to send them somewhere where more information awaits, okay? And that's going to give you a big opportunity to actually convert this into a sale because you're being more helpful the more they go forward. People like helpfulness. So let's crack on. Make this your own, okay? Now, what you see on the right is wrong on purpose to make a point, okay? <laughs> so, please don't do that. Let's have a look at this, okay? So, not everything about it is wrong, but there's parts of it that are making my OCD want to explode. So, the banner that you see within the email, this little blue section here where it says glpro.email and the little expert sign, this is something called a banner. And it's to show your branding, I suppose, to show your sort of company logo and kind of what you kind of, uh, you know, it's like a small little snippet, like almost a screen grab of the header of your website, I guess you could look at it that way. So people get a feeling of what you're about, kind of from the colors that you've chosen and everything. Um, but banners are also graphic links if you action them as such. So you can make that clickable. So when people click on your banner, they go to your website, they go to your blog, whatever your banner is relating to. Um, sometimes people make their banner go to the same place as the link in the email because they make their banner campaign specific. So with every new campaign, they have a new banner. It makes sense. And you know you can do this in a templated way, so it takes you very little time using free tools to do that. If you don't know of any free graphic tools, just comment and I'll tell you uh, of one. But I mean, we all probably have access to a free tool where we can use templates to make uh, banners and stuff. Super easy. Localizing. So you'll see addresses, contact us. That's called localizing. So you tell people where you are. So, you know, there's this old idea that if somebody's annoyed with you, they'll come and knock on your door and shout at you. But giving people the sense that that's possible is a great way to build trust. And, you know, don't lie. Make sure those are your addresses. I know none of you on this webinar would ever do that. So, yeah. So, Johan de Pot, um, yeah, again, what I'm about to say, just there's a disclaimer on this. I'm going to tell you what the graphic um, things are. But remember, we don't own any of these. We don't have anything to do with them. It's just tools that I personally, in my personal life, use. So, you have one called Canva, C A N V A dot com. Uh, C A N V A. I'll just actually pop a little comment. Um, I can't give you the URL um, because I'm not at that stage of the thing, but that's how you spell it. So, Canva is a graphics tool. 
um, that has a free level. I mean, there's some limitations to every free thing, as you know, because, you know, we need to make sales as people. Uh, but we've got nothing to do with Canva. It's just a useful little thing that we use, and there's a free level. So uh, you can make banners and stuff and then download them and then put them into your emails really easily. Um, Canva is really only for making the banner. The rest of the process is um, just using Gmail and stuff, but there are YouTube um, how-tos and all that sort of thing as well. So that is the tool, Johan. Uh, okay, so moving forward, unsubscribe link. So a lot of people sometimes feel like they don't want to include this. Um, if you don't know how to, never fear, Yam will help. Uh, in, in, input that uh, unsubscribe link. There is an option for that on Yam. Unsubscribe links make people subscribe less. Can you believe it? And the reason is because you've given them the option. You never want to incite rebellion in people. You want to give them the option to rebel, but you never want to cage them and force them into it, you know? So people that don't see an unsubscribe link get a bit hot under the collar because, you know, who are you to trap them into being receiving your emails forever, which is fair enough, I suppose. Give them control over their own inbox. If they don't want to hear from you, be humble, let them unsubscribe, put the link in there for you. And, um, you know, in some areas, it's definitely uh, illegal not to have one. So rather have it than not. It's kind of industry practice across all industries, which is rare. I've covered graphic links uh, when I was talking about banners. Text links are examples like the phone numbers in blue, the unsubscribe links, and the link within your email. These are text that you can click to go to a site or a landing page or a blog or wherever you want to send them. Your formatting is important, and this is where my OCD has gone all over the place, because here this address is, is not underlined, and it has a little symbol after it, a uh, hyphen thingy, and then the contact us doesn't have one, and it is underlined, and I, I can't stand that personally. Um, and yeah, so I've, I've done that on purpose um, as much as it gives me heart palpitations because I want to show you how annoying it can be to some people. Uh, so pay attention to your formatting um, and develop variations of this so you can really come to the bottom of what works and what doesn't. You're trying new things, you're learning. Um, you know, some people think they know absolutely everything, uh, but they probably aren't on this webinar because, you know, intelligent people know that there is something new to learn every day. And this is something exciting because you're going to learn something new every day. Remember, you need to follow up as well. So for every campaign, do one follow up email, give them a reminder of the deadline and provide the link again. No one's going to go uh, sniffing through the emails from the past to find your elusive link. They don't care that much, to be honest. They didn't know you existed before you emailed them the first time. Probably don't remember you yet. So you do a follow-up. If, you know, if they haven't clicked, you do one type of follow-up, and Yam will show you who's clicked and who hasn't. I'll get to that in a moment. So you can do one type of follow-up to people who click the link. Another to people who haven't even opened your email the first time. Can you imagine the rudeness? <laughs> so, yes, I'm just uh, thinking about different ways that you could do your follow-ups here, really. But remember, they are important. You need to make sure that you are reaching these people and you're reminding them. Do one follow-up per email, though. Don't badger people. Unless they've given you a reason to email them a ton more, don't. It's rude and it's annoying. And you don't want to annoy people because then they'll never listen to you again. It's the boy who cried wolf all over again. So uh, remember, provide a reminder about the deadline as well so they know when time runs running out. Step number four covers the landing page. And this is something that you can use. I'll tell you a bit more about tools at the end. I'll give you links to tools that you can use. Again, the landing pages, we don't... Uh, have anything to do with those tools. It's just stuff that we use and we think is good. Uh, well, I use and I think is good. Uh, your landing page, the whole point of a landing page is this is completely different to your website, okay? Remember, it's not the same as your website. Throw that out the window. Different to your website, one pager, and it stands alone. And the whole point of it is to basically 
drive one campaign. And that's the same thing your email's doing, remember? So this is the stage of helpfulness that progresses from your email. They click, they go to your landing page, they get more information, they see this countdown timer and a form to enter their details to register their interest before that timer runs out. That's really a good way to get people's information, to get their consent to be emailed further as well. It's an important one. Remember this FOMO thing, it stands for fear of missing out. It's another way of saying urgency in a more sort of emotionally responsible way. Remember you're inciting fear in people. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility, Spider-Man. Remember that. Uh, you need to use this properly, okay? Don't be too salesy, don't be annoying, don't be that guy or that girl or that person. Really, really don't. Just be honest, like I keep saying, be honest, give the form, give the countdown timer, and if you uh, get a response, fantastic. If people aren't responding, I'll show you how to interpret that as well. Step five is analyzing the data. This is where you figure out what happened in your campaign and why. You got the leads, step one, great. Done. You sent out the email. Step two. Fantastic. Done. Now you're going to figure out what the results actually mean in your life and in your business's life. So YAM is the tool that'll help you with that. Once again, it shows you a tracking report, which is so helpful. So your tracking report gives you information on the emails you sent, which ones were opened, which ones were clicked on, and onwards and onwards. So essentially, it gives you everything you need to know. It'll show you the emails that bounced, the emails that were incorrect, the emails that didn't, uh, sorry, the emails that people responded to by typing. I'll explain more about how all of that is displayed a bit later on in this webinar. Step number six, before we get to the practical section, I wanna tell you, you're gonna be doing this again and again and again, and you're gonna be doing what worked again and again, and what didn't, you're just gonna drop in the bin or in the recycling and walk away, okay? So adjust your approach. If it's not working, or indeed Horatio, even if it is, adjust your approach to always chase the next benchmark, okay? Refine your targets. Try new sectors. Try new job titles. So you know as well as I do that people within companies, some are more likely to respond than others. Some people are more likely to email you back than others. Some people are more likely to follow a link than others. Some people are deeply cynical and they often don't click on links. So, you know, try different job titles, sectors as well. You know, you may be trying to sell to salespeople, but try different types of salespeople. New geographic locations as well, head offices and other parts of companies are often run in different parts of the country or the area, even the city. So you need to look at geographic locations because those are relevant to the response rate that you're getting. If you're trying to reach salespeople, but you're emailing the accounts department, it's not going to be very helpful. Then change your banners within your emails with every campaign. Don't be boring. Don't be predictable. Rather, keep people interested and let them see how upwardly mo mobile your company is, how well you're doing, how much stuff you've got going on. Show them that you are not stagnating. So change your banners within your emails. Offer incentives in emails and landing pages as well. Remember, incentives make people do things. So make them want to click, make them want to fill that form in. You can't always just rely on a timer. You know, you have to make them care about the timer and that all depends on the incentive. If I don't do this form by the time the timer reaches zero, I'm gonna miss out on X, Y, and Z. That's the attitude you want to instill. Let's move on. I'm gonna show you the practical section now of Gopen Leads, and for one more second, you can enjoy that incredibly embarrassing photo of me in the bottom corner. Now, let's dive into Gopen Leads, all right? I'll show you how to do it from the bottom up. Here we have Google, and 
I'm going to go to gopenleads.com. Here we have gopenleads.com, local leads finder. And it does what it says on the tin. So you can click on this button to install the Chrome extension, or indeed, you can click on this button to launch the web app. There's different use cases for each of them, and you'll know exactly which to use when by the end of this webinar. So first of all, click on, clicking on install Chrome extension boosts you through to the Chrome web store. You see this button here, the blue one, that says remove from Chrome. Well, it says that because I've already added mine to Chrome. But in that same location, it'll say add to Chrome if you haven't already. And then you follow the one or two little on-screen uh, permissions that you have to give, but that's all very easy to follow. And it's installed, and you can close that window. When it's installed, this is what it looks like. A little Gopen Leads logo. And when you put your mouse over it, you'll get a reminder of what it does. To use this tool, as you'll see, let me get the pop-up back, visit Google Maps and enter a search term like restaurant to start finding leads. Fair enough, let's do that. Go to Google Maps. And now we're going to do a search. And I, because I have a one-track mind, I'm going to do a search for mechanics. And I'm going to also, because I have Florida on the mind, I'm going to do a search for mechanics near Miami. So as we go down into that, remember, we're still just using Google Maps right now. And these are the results that we want. And we are going to get these results into Gopen Leads by clicking on this little Gopen Leads logo. So I have signed into Gopen Leads. If you haven't yet, when you click on this, you'll find a little button that says Get Started. And that will guide you through the login process. But you've signed in already, and here you have it. Select all. This button allows you to grab all the information from this one Google page. Remember, Google always gives you results in sets of pages, sometimes 20, sometimes slightly more, depending on the ads and all sorts of cool stuff that they add in there. So remember that reviews help a lot with companies as well with getting accurate information and Gopen Leads using the Google Maps combination is going to let you take advantage of those reviews to get even more accurate results. So that's fantastic. So just pausing, Elle has a question. Any plans for Firefox? So for now, we don't have a Firefox extension, but you can use the web app in Firefox. Uh, we only have a Chrome extension for now, um, but as I said, the, the web app you can use in Firefox, or in any browser, really, uh, any of the major ones, at least. So you want more results than just the 21. So I pressed Select All, and you'll see that I'm on the Businesses tab, and I've got 21 results selected. I want more. So I'm going to go down the list of results from Google. And at the bottom is a little arrow pointing to the right. And I click on it. I get results of the next batch. You'll see that the map updates. And then I go back to Gopen Leads, click the little logo, and I can say select all again. And now it's gone up to 41 results because I've added the next 20. So this is something you'll get to be very quick at because it's a click here. Wait one second, select all, go back, click here, wait one second, it loads, back to Gopen Leads, and once again, select all. You'll see that we're up to 80. And you can keep going until Google itself runs out of information. As soon as Google stops showing you pages, that's the end of your results. And you'll see that this process can keep going and going and going and going onwards and onwards and onwards.
So what I'm going to do for the sake of speed, because the whole point of this particular webinar isn't to show you how to get the leads necessarily. It's to show you what to do once you've got them. So I'm going to stop when I get to 200 so I can show you the next step. 198, that's close as anything. The next step is to say add businesses. Remember, I could go on and on and on and on, but remember, Miami is huge and there are tons of mechanics. So I could be doing this for a couple of more minutes and I want to crack on. So let me go add businesses and then you get through to the leads tab. And the leads tab, as you'll see, is starting to populate the list of leads within those companies, those businesses that we were just looking at. And if I press select all, you'll see that 98 results are selected. If I, as an exercise, unselect everything and reselect everything, sometimes you'll find that this number grows because this list is being populated by the APIs I was talking about earlier. The information is flowing through the tunnel into your results page. So click it backwards and forwards on and off a few times to make sure you've selected all of the results and then press add leads. Here you'll see that 296 results will be emailed to me. I'm gonna press export businesses and leads to accept this batch of leads. Now I get a screen saying it's gonna take up to 10 minutes to reach my inbox and it invites me to start another search. While we wait for these leads, and you'll see it'll be much quicker than 10 minutes, never fear, we're gonna launch the web app, okay? Using the other button on the website, www.gopenleads.com. My pleasure, Al. Um, Al's just saying thank you for answering his question about Firefox. So I'm just going to press launch the web app here, and that allows me to launch app.gopenleads.com. This is something I haven't signed into yet, so you can see the process. This is exactly the way it looks on the Chrome extension as well, but it just happens within the little window I showed you. So press get started and it'll take you to the login screen. I'm gonna say login with Google and that'll take me through to the option that I need. This will all depend on how you personally logged in I personally logged in using Google, so that's the option I'm going to choose. So here I have the web app. Here I'm logged in. And you can see all of my information. Johan has asked a question, just to pause here. Does Google search also work? And Johan's referring to the Google Maps and Chrome extension combination? And the answer there, Johan, is no. This works off of uh, Google Maps so that you can get all of those details as far as addresses, phone numbers, and all that good stuff in the most accurate way. That's why we've built it off of Google Maps. I hope that answers your question, Johan. If not, do let me know and I'll answer your question again. So back to the web app. Remember, I got here by clicking on launch the web app from gopinleads.com. I'm gonna do another search here so you can see the process using the web app. It's exactly the same. It just looks slightly different because we're not using uh, Google Maps as the basis. So I'm going to do a quick search for publishers. And remember, try and avoid plurals. I find that using the actual term as the individual themselves would introduce them, their job title is the best way to go. So no one would say, I am a publishers. People would say, rather, I am a publisher. So use that terminology. So publisher, and I'm going to go ahead and look in San Francisco, California. Remember, you can go all over the world. I'm just using San Francisco as an example. Uh, the states are on my mind today. So here we have, as before, the businesses tab. And when you go down, you see a little map on the right-hand side. And you can say, once again, select all, which is very helpful. And if you scroll down further, you'll see an option to load more. You can go ahead and click this a ton of times. 
what this will do is you can see with every click that you do, click, the map shifts. Click, the loading of more leads. Click, the map shifts. And you keep clicking until you run out of leads. If you want to know how many you've clicked on, just go to the top of the page, press select all, and it'll tell you. You've got 231 results selected right now, and that's just businesses. So let's stop there for the moment. You can, as I said, carry on and on and on and on and on until you've loaded all the leads that you want. And it'll just keep building. As you can see, we've got over, well, yeah, now, three over 300 businesses, 330 business results. And that was a couple of extra clicks, you see. So very fast, very, very, very effective. So these are the publishers that are in San Francisco. Well, the first 300 odd of them anyway. Pressing the add businesses is going to give you a button is going to give you the leads tab as it did in the Chrome extension. And if you scroll down, you'll see the leads. And this list is populating, as I mentioned with the APIs, it keeps populating. And you can see I've got 220 leads, which is a huge amount. So remember as well, this is going to be covered in the hacks section. Uh, a bit after this uh, webinar, and it's going to show you, after the practical section of this webinar, I should rather say, and it's going to show you one of the hacks is the search filter box. And this is a great opportunity for me to show you that. So the search filter box helps you specify things and make sure you're getting really specific leads in two ways. The first really useful way is that you can use the minus or hyph uh, or subtract subtract key. Uh, I believe it's also um, called a hyphen. I stand to be corrected on that. Uh, you can go ahead and remove leads you don't want. All right. So we've got US San Francisco publishers right here. If you want to remove anybody that doesn't work with e or anyone that works with ebooks rather, subtract ebooks. The keyword ebooks will be removed. Okay. If you want to make sure that you're only getting people, remember this is on the leads tab now, people who live and work and are having all of their social presence centered around San Francisco, you can go ahead and include spelling is atrocious, San Francisco right here. And that will make sure that all of these leads are from San Francisco. And that's a great way to make sure that you're avoiding the scenario where people from outside of the area may work for a San Francisco local company remotely or may commute in. So that's just a way you can protect yourself and make sure you're getting the most accurate leads. When I go ahead and press add leads, you'll see that 550 results will be emailed through to me that fast, all right? So to show you really how quick this is, you hold on to your hat for just one moment and you will see that already our list has come through for mechanics near Florida. And that was a couple of minutes ago that I was chatting to you about that. So this is how the email looks. You scroll down, there's a nice little greeting. And Raj is the name of the founder of Gopin Leads, the chief. He is the man in the uh, sort of driving seat of innovation of Gopin Leads, if you will. So here it says, hi there, you researched Miami, Florida, USA, mechanics, and you have two options. You can download the results, big yellow button, and that will download an XLS file in layman's terms, a Microsoft Excel file that you can then use. You can upload XLS files to other CRM tools at this point if you don't want to use YAM, or if you're going to go down the YAM route, press View in Google Sheets. So this is what happens when you do that. So what you need to do here is quite simply make sure that this has loaded through to your personal drive. And you'll see that when your sheet, by clicking on this link, loads, it says view only. 
The reason it says view only is that we keep a safe version of this tamper free on our drive folder. So let's move it to yours or mine in this case. Press file, go down to make a copy. And the copy document window will pop up. Type in the name of the document. And make sure that at the bottom it says my drive. That will make sure it goes to my drive, or in your case, yours. So you'll see that the one that I added the new name to has loaded up here. And I'm going to close the old one. It's there if you need it, accessible from your email to make another copy from. This first tab is the businesses tab. Remember when we were finding these leads, the process we went through. We found businesses, then we found people within them. Then there's a third tab, leads with no names. This is a free list. And these are the same emails as available in the first tab. We just wanted to separate them so you can quickly send the emails. So these may be ones that the tool couldn't easily separate the first name from, whatever the case may be. They are there for you to contact. OK, so here we have the first tab. And this is the tab of businesses. Little comment here from Joanna Lang. So cool to have comments from new people. Hi, Joanna. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to read your comment. How nice the details are extracted as well as having the company URL. Exactly, it's useful. So I'll show you what's in the businesses tab. This is the first tab we're in, and you can see the tabs at the bottom of your screen. The first tab is the businesses tab. Business names, addresses, phone numbers, Google Maps URLs, website URLs, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, email, and more details about the companies. When you see, as you notice here, companies that don't have an email address attached to them, remember, you do not pay for those lines. Remember there as well, there is a free version of this tool, and in that case, you won't be using your credits for that. So anything that doesn't have an email, isn't useful for an email campaign, and you don't pay for that. If you want to know which will and which will not have emails, you can go back to the email you got from us. Here, businesses charged. So this is how many came back with email addresses. This is how many have not made their email addresses discoverable online. This is how many of the employees have email addresses attached to them. So in this case, it's a difficult niche. As I'm sure you can imagine, a lot of mechanics don't spend a lot of time in emails. They're a lot more active in the real world. So named emails are free, and that's because there are no emails attached to 86 of those. So this will be quite a gappy list. But it depends, of course, on the way you search, on where you search, and who you're searching for. Some niches, in this case mechanics, will have very few employees actually listed on their websites because, as I said, they work a lot more in the real world. So here I'm going to show you the second tab, the Leads tab. And the Leads tab is going to give you the people within these companies, their first name, their last name, their business name, the job title, the email address within their company, the LinkedIn a URL for them themselves, website URLs, company phone numbers and addresses. And then again, on the last tab, you have the business names and the emails that are the same as in the first tab, but just separate so you can quickly send the emails. So that is the way that the leads come through to you. There's a reminder about the way the three tabs work in the email we send you as well. So that is how you can go ahead and look at those. So I also want to show you how you can make sure that you're getting your email process down pat. I want to make sure that I help you to get it right. So what I've done is I've made an email list of my own. 
and I've just taken first name, last name, and the email address, and I have insert some real, some fake email addresses as well that'll bounce an error and all sorts of cool stuff. But at the same time, you are going to have the ability to see how YAM works. So don't get too excited, Jeff. Okay, let's go to the comments. Johan de Par. Are we okay with GDPR in Europe? Johan, that's a very good question. Now, let me get into that. GDPR is based around consent, all right? So that protects people from getting emails they didn't ask to get. So this is how you're gonna get around that. In Europe, one tactic would be to go via social media. In the results you get from us, whether there's an email address or not, there is going to be, in most cases, some type of social media link. You can use that link to contact them via that social platform. By signing up to that social platform, they have agreed to be contacted via that social platform. So that's one workaround for the GDPR. Remember those of you that are in Canada or contacting people in Canada with the Canadian spam laws, that's another way to go around it. Remember, I am not a GDPR can spam expert. I am simply telling you the tips that I implement in my own personal life, in my own personal uh, everyday activities. So that's one way to work with GDPR. Okay, another way to do it is to fragment your email campaign, Johan. And what I mean by that is to break it down into smaller parts. Instead of sending one email that says, hi, I'm Johan, this is what I want, pay me, <laughs> which is quite, oh, okay. You can send an email saying, hi, I'm Johan, I work for this and this company. Would you be interested in receiving further information from me or not? If they say no, remove them. If they say yes, crack on, you're in the clear. So that's how I'd work with it, Johan. I hope that answers your question. If not, do ask me again and I'll answer your question again. So let's look at this example database that I've made. I've got email addresses, first names, and family names, or last names, whatever you want to call them. So I want to email these email addresses and I want to address these people by name, and that's easy. Here, I've got a draft that I've made just for the webinar, so you can see how it's done. These are the brackets I was talking about. Here they are closing. Here they are opening. They're called braces, or if you're like me, they're called curly brackets. And you can see them above your square brackets. On a Windows machine, usually it's a shift and press the square bracket button. That'll give you the curly brackets or braces if you want to be fancy. Um, and the closing square bracket, of course, has the closing curly bracket brace above it. Okay, so that's the extent of the coding you're going to do today. That was difficult, wasn't it? Two brackets to open, two brackets to close. And it has, says first name in the middle there. Now, why does it say first name? Because that's how I want to address these people, okay? There's other ways to go. If this was the company name, you could say hi, and then in the middle of your braces, you could say company name. Really easy, right? So you can contact people and individualize it on a company basis or a personal name basis. That easy. There's a way to check that it's worked as well so you don't get egg on your face when you press send, and the yam makes that easy. So this here is not good email content. It isn't. This is just so my colleagues know that this email can go straight to their trash folder. It's just so you can see what's going on, what the reaction to YAM is when people interact with the email. Let's move forward. Okay, so we've got the coding in inverted commas done. We've got our opening set of braces or curly brackets, and you've got the closing set of braces or curly brackets, okay? And that's going to make sure that you can get their first names into this email. Go back to your database in Google Sheets. Remember, YAM only works with Google Sheets. And press Tools. My bad. Press Add-ons. Then yet another mail merge. Okay. Once again, Add-ons. Yet another mail merge. 
Then start mail merge, and this will start your process going. Don't worry, it won't do anything without your consent. You'll see that the little YAM window starts with start mail merge, and it says Yo loading YAM. Remember YAM stands for yet another mail merge, and a mail merge is simply this. It merges a list with your emails. That's all. Okay, so this is the start mail merge window. Here it tells you how many emails you can send in a day. I've paid for the upgraded version, so I get 400 emails per 24-hour period. The free level is 50, which is generally more than enough for most use cases on a small scale. Here you have the sender name. This will show up in your emails. You can change this, but I recommend being totally transparent. Your first, your last. That's what I would keep it to. Email template. If you mouse over this section, you'll see that it reminds you to use your data tags, your braces, your curly brackets in your Gmail drafts. So YAM's always taking care of you, which I appreciate. Remember, I've got nothing to do with YAM. I just use it. So here in this drop-down menu are my drafts. And mine was called webinar first name draft, if you recall. So that's the one I've selected from my list. You can also go ahead and click Buzz More Email Templates to do just that. You can help get yourself more uh, template advice there. So that's helpful for you, Johan, um, to get more templates going. And for you, L, um, to get more templates as well. All of you, really, that are watching this, that's a great way to get some. Those are not ones that you can just kind of click on bang in and use. You will have to make them relevant to your business, but they are going to set you off on the great way forward. Make sure this is selected, track emails opened, clicked or bounced. Very important because that's where all of your results are going to be, okay? So when you, if you do pay for Yam's uh, extra stuff, you get delay delivery, but this button won't be visible on the free version, okay? So just ignore it for now. And by pressing receive a test email, YAM is going to send an email to your email address, your Gmail email address, the one that is basically your Gmail address that you're writing this draft in. And it will send you an email to check whether it's given you or whether your code has worked or not, okay? So let's go ahead and have a look I'm going through to my inbox so I can get an idea as to whether this has worked for me or not. And here I've already gotten my webinar first name draft. And you can see that it's put my name in there. And the reason it's done that is because this just used the first name from my list. It'll always send to your email address, but put the first name in so you know that the little uh, let's call it a code, has worked. When you know that it has worked because you've gotten your test email, you can go ahead and start your mail merge by pressing this button, send six emails. So that will show you in real time which emails it's sending. It says all emails have been sent, then four emails sent. Why only four? Because these two I input incorrectly on purpose. So you could see what happens when you've got incorrect emails in your database. That won't happen when you get results from us. You can still send how many emails today. That tells you the information on that. So this has now been sent out to your readers, to your email list. And they're going to open it. And when they open it, YAM is going to notice. And you're going to see that in your tracking report on the right-hand side of your screen. You're also going to be able to see when people click on the link within your email. And you're also going to be able to know when people respond. So when they go ahead and type an actual response to you, you will get notification as well. So in all of these different ways, YAM is always showing you what's happening in your campaign in real time which I'm sure you agree is a very useful thing to have happen. This way, you don't ever have any doubt as to what's going on. You never have any worry about, you know, not having any feedback from your campaign. On your screen now, you'll see that one email has been opened. 
you'll notice that another email, well, in a moment or two, you'll notice that another email has been clicked. And that will also show up in YAM. You'll see that that is all being populated in real time in your tracking report on the side. Remember that when people type a response to you as well, that YAM will take note of that and YAM will let you know that that has happened, okay? So what that would look like then is it would come up in YAM as responded. So you'll see that three emails have been opened. Look at the top here. Four emails have been sent successfully, excluding the two errors. Of those four, three emails were opened. That's 75% open rate. Of those that were opened, so remember, of those three now, one was clicked. One person clicked my link. One person responded to my email by typing an actual response. So that is going to give you some great insights into what's going on in your campaign. And I'll explain a bit more. If somebody has not even opened your email, that means your subject line could use some work. Maybe you're not being intriguing or relevant enough. Maybe they're just not interested. You'll know more when you do your follow-up, but for now, try a different subject line. Okay, try a different tactic. If the email has been opened and nobody has either responded or clicked, then you can tell that they weren't convinced by your email. So try a different type of content within your email. Try new stuff. Remember, this is something that you're going to learn. There isn't anyone on the face of the earth who can make you a pro overnight. Yeah. It's going to have to be practice for you. and <laughs> You're going to learn to enjoy it, I promise. Email clicked. That tells you that the link within your email has been clicked and somebody's gone to your landing page. Okay. In that case, go to your landing page and you can see if they filled in their details. If they didn't, the landing page needs work. You see how it works. YAM can only tell you as far as the interaction with regards to your email your Gmail that you send people, okay? If responded, if somebody responds, uh, clicks and responds, okay? So you'll see the person at the bottom of this list went ahead and simply clicked the link, okay? If that person goes ahead and then responds, YAM prioritizes a response as more impressive, more important than a click. Okay, stands to reason. So if the person at the bottom of the list was to then respond after clicking, YAM would change. You just saw that happen on your right. It's just finished happening now. So now it says, of the three emails that were opened, it's taken the click away and it's added it to responded because a response that's been typed is more impressive in YAM's prioritization than a simple click. It gets a conversation going instead of a blind click that can't be then tracked further. So that is what YAM can do for you. That's how you can judge your actions, your campaign, your success on what YAM's telling you, okay? So this is gonna give you that confidence to go ahead and investigate further and to practice and to practice and to practice. And remember, like I said, if you want proof that nobody is a professional from the out go, go watch some of my earlier webinars. They're available on the uh, YouTube channel that you're watching right now. And that will allow you to see how many mistakes I've made. Watch this YouTube video back once uh, the webinar is over. You can use the same link that you're watching in YouTube to watch it again. And listen for mistakes. I make a ton of them all the time. And the thing is that you've got to realize that it's going to happen and you've got to be fine with it. And you've got to just move on and get things done. So I want to show you as well. Let's go a step into the hacks side of things. Let's crack the matrix open and show you how to become a power user overnight. Okay. So crowbarring at the matrix uh, is hack number one. 
removing unwanted leads. I showed you this in the practical section where we used the subtract symbol before your keyword to get rid of a keyword that you didn't want to include. Hack number two is to use reviews to your advantage, and that that, in, that uh, goes back to the mechanics search I did. So remember, anyone, any business that's likely to have a Google review, go and check them out using the Chrome extension Google Maps combination first and foremost, because then you're going to be able to know exact more, uh, well, sorry, I'm getting my words all garbled. There's an example of a mistake, by the way. Ah, so let's move on. So the tool includes review data. So when reviews are left and responded to, the tool takes those into account. So if those can be used to review the data and make them more accurate, it'll do so automatically. So go ahead and make sure that you're using the res those uh, existing Google reviews to your advantage. Bearing in mind, use the web app. Uh, this goes back to the use cases for the web app that I was mentioning in the beginning. Go back to the web app for hotels and accommodation because Google, you guessed it, has algorithms that they play around with. I don't know why the screen is being cut off slightly. I apologize for that. Happened on the last slide as well, or the first one. Uh, that will be repaired by the next webinar. Okay, so this is really a good thing to remember. Google has influence over the order and the number of results you see in a search for hotels and accommodation. That's based on ad spend. That's based on all sorts of things. Google can give you more information on that, I'm sure. Uh, probably not. But they uh, have algorithms in place. So remember, use the web app for hotels and accommodation. City discrepancies, I covered this also in the practical section. If you're getting people on the leads tab that are from outside of the city you're looking for, these could be remote workers who are registered at those companies that are within the city you're looking in. Uh, there's a hundred different reasons why somebody may have a different personal uh, location registered to what their company does. So you can refilter that by simply typing in the name of the area again. It's really easy, it's super easy in the leads tab in the search filter box, all right? So yeah, that brings me to the end of my webinar today. You're ready to rock your sales targets and really get this done for yourselves, okay? And I wanna thank you for attending this week's webinar. I'm gonna give you my email address in the comments section as well. I just wanted to give it to you on the screen here too. Um, so that you can crack on and email me immediately if you want to. I'm going to give it to you in the comments right now, though. And I'm also going to give you some free stuff in the comments section so that you can go ahead and look at what I've been talking about today. Uh, it's going to be some templates. I'm also going to give you links to our Facebook communities and the relevant websites you need. So while I'm doing that, I want you to go ahead and type any comments, any questions that you have sitting with you right now, and I can answer those for you. There is time, don't you worry. Um, I'm here for as long as you are, so if you have questions, I can answer them for you. And in the meantime, I'm going to start um, dropping all sorts of uh, useful bits and pieces in the comments for you, so you can go ahead and check them all out, okay? I'm just making sure that I've got access to the comments in the right area that I need them in. And now I'm going to start with some links for you. So the first one that I'm going to give you is to our Facebook group for Gopen Leads. The Gopen Leads Facebook group is a great place for you to go when you need some help with your campaigns, when you need the team to answer your questions, or when you just need to be alerted of new up and coming stuff. So here's the link for our Gopin Leads community Facebook group. Go ahead and join there. We would love to have you. You are always welcome. And please, please do go ahead and join. Then for content, sales, leads information, well, tips and all that sort of good stuff, go to our Sales Leads and Pro Content Facebook group. That's a really good place to go and get additional support that maybe you need outside of your Gopin Leads needs. I'm also going to give you the link to Gopin Leads website so you can go ahead and access the Chrome extension and the uh, web 
the uh, web app from there natively really easily really quickly one click like i showed you in the practical section and this next one is a link to yam yam is really useful and yam is going to give you everything that you need to know uh, with regards to your campaign like i just showed you it gives you all the results and everything that goes on there. Now, the next one is a great little link, and this is for LaunchRock. And LaunchRock is a great place to go for templated um, emails and all that sort of thing. It's gonna make you a lot more uh, productive. It's gonna give you a lot more success because you're gonna see some templates um, that are really great. That's gonna give you a much faster turnaround time with your landing page creation. As well, I'm going to give you some inspiration today. All right, so the inspiration is gonna come in the form of some success stories that we love to talk about. And these are people that have used Gopin Leads in the past and have really had some great successes with it. So go and get some inspiration from there and learn about how people have used this tool to really turn their lives around and their productivity around. It's a really good thing to, to uh, explore because you'll be able to see what works and what doesn't. I'm also going to give you some more information here, and this is going to be in the form of some templates that you can play with to get your ideas flowing. So let me give you these in the comments section as well. This is going to be opening to the Goodman Lantern website. Never fear, Goodman Lantern is our mother company, our mothership, our base, our everything. So <laughs> that is where all the goodness happens. So I have not forgotten that one of you are going to be winning a free one-on-one -on -one with me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fall silent for 30 seconds while I tally up the comments and then I will be announcing who gets that free one-on-one. -on -one. It's a very close race as it's going. It's very kind of neck and neck. I see a lot of comments from you, Han. I see a good number of comments from L as well. I'm busy tallying these up so that I can make sure that it is all on the up and up, that we're being totally fair, that everything's correct. Oh, yeah, I missed a comment from you, Johan, during the webinar. It's terrible of me. This is a great list. Oh, thank you, Johan. <laughs> Sorry for missing that one. Okay. Bear with me while I tally these up for you. I'll tell you what, Johan's in the lead so far with L close second. L is Toronto Hotspots, if any of you are wondering who is L. Toronto Hotspots is L. So I'm busy nearly at the end of this um, little process here. And the grand winner today, air horn, please. I don't have an air horn, is Johan. So, Johan, you have won a free one-on-one -on -one with me. Congratulations, sir. I'm going to be giving you my email address here in the comments section. I understand, and not many people want to leave their email address on YouTube, so I'm going to do it for you. There's my email address, Johan. Drop me an email, claim your free one-on-one, -on -one, sir. Everyone else, welcome to email me as well. If you need additional help, if you need advice, if you need anything from me, that's why I'm here. That's my whole purpose, okay, is to help you. So get in touch with me. Always, always stoked to help you. And L, 
that is awesome sports and sportsmanship man i don't have to tell you obviously <laughs> great sportsmanship from l great to see great people using this tool lots of interaction which is so cool to see when you're presenting a webinar thank you so much for your interaction today it's been really good to have you all and remember check the comments section there's some cool free stuff there for you and you'll be able to check it all out andrew randall there's a cool little comment here that i want to end off on thanks again jay there's always something new that i pick up from these sessions every week thank you andrew i'm glad to hear that every week i'm trying to freshen things up so if you guys have any questions if you have any suggestions for what to include next week stuff you want to see pop me an email i include these things you can see that i care about you i hope at this stage it's my pleasure johan thank you for your comments as well and uh, all of you have a great one and feel free to email me at any time remember i am here for you and i mean it <laughs>